Welcome back to the Stuff or Whatever podcast. Your host, B. Quan Chi here. And before we get started, I always like to get in the habit of saying the best way to support me and the channel is to like, comment, and subscribe. Whether that be here on YouTube, follow on Twitter for updates and other fun tweets, and follow on Twitch, ID Stream Gaming. As well as those uh, gaming streams, VODs are uploaded here on YouTube, so you can check those out as well. So we've got a very special podcast today. Since Valentine's Day is just around a corner, I thought this might be a good theme to just talk about like dating, being single, stuff like that. Not sure if this would be the most interesting storytelling and all that. One thing I wanted to talk about before I get started, because I did do like a little mini cast talking about Nintendo Direct. So check that out if you haven't. But there's a few notes I forgot to mention. Just some things that I thought was missing from the director. Slight disappointments, and that is like no word or Pikmin 4, because I feel like that was announced a long time ago and it hasn't been any updates at all. I'm kind of surprised much if it's still happening, if it's coming to Switch. I, I, I was kind of expecting at least something. Because of the more recent mobile game, the Pikmin Bloom. Also, no updates on Metroid Prime 4. I was hoping, I'm not sure how soon was it? I thought we were like four years ago, it was announced that it was like changing studios, redone. I forget how long it's been since they like scrapped it and then redone it with a new team and all that. But it's absolutely nothing. And then Breath of the Wild uh, for Zelda, the second game. No, nothing really new. We did get some updates to last direct, but nothing really new yet. So maybe more directs. I guess people uh, might be hoping for more regular directs. Hopefully one before E3. I just made a little gaming blob before I get started with the, I guess, the main theme of the podcast. So in regards to like dating and relationship, I am painfully single. And I, 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 I know that was the first thing that came to my mind, but... It's one of the things that I'm very content with, and I don't know, I feel like some people get that vibe, like, or in that mindset that they need to be in a relationship, and sometimes they even compromise their expectations, their values, and things like that. You know, it's kind of sets this de- desperation to be with another person, um, like a romantic partner, or a life partner, or however you want to call it, and I admit there's been times that I kind of felt desperate as well, just kind of overwhelmed that... You know, things weren't working out or weren't connecting. <laughs> My dating experience is, I guess, you know, regular actual, like, dating. Um, I guess it's average, but I've only been in, like, one actual long-term relationship. And that's funny, I haven't done, like, any dating in high school at all. I guess I could say it's kind of a late bloomer. And I get that out, I get this out there, but I don't think it's, like, too obvious. Uh, but being, you know, gay, I did, I came out, you know, after high school because I was still figuring things out. So I think that's going to be part of it, even though I kind of knew, you know, that that was the case, but I guess, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like I see like there's uh, TV shows and dramas or whatever. And when I think about like, I don't know, it just seems like all that stuff, like, especially like with dating, especially like uh, sex and stuff like that, like that can definitely wait to after high school. Not that I'm like a prude or, um, save yourself for marriage kind of guy. Uh, but I think it's kind of overrated to like, uh, have like the one, the boyfriend or, you know, taking it further physically or anything like that. So there's plenty of time. So even like, not kind of offset with, uh, that as well as like drinking as well. Cause I don't know. And, Cause I guess I've been watching a lot of the euphoria too. And that has a more like drug use as well, but like drinking and, relationships and especially the physical like I, I could wait but i guess my point is like it's not bad to be single in the sense that you don't have to feel like it, it means less of yourself in a sense and there's people see like hey if i can't attract a partner or i can't um find myself in a relationship especially if it's something that i wanted or you have like those goals of like even like starting family and stuff like that and having even that support system with like not just a romantic partner but a life partner um, all that, and just kind of, you know, not let it tear you down, but if it's something that you still like this, um, or would like to have one day, you know, just also don't be, like, unmotivated to not, like, do anything, and I think I kind of fall in that trap as well, like, I mean, much, 
an effort to date or put myself out there. Like I do some of the apps as well, but to be honest, it's been over six years. And I don't know, it's kind of weird that I say that because I don't feel like bad about it, but I don't feel like proud of it. it in the sense, like it's like not braggable, but nothing that really feels like brings me down. There's been times like I made excuses and stuff like that, like um, job change and sometimes like, oh, I don't have a car. I don't want to feel like, you know. I'm not bringing much to the table. And it's not that everything's important and stuff like that. Like, I would work on myself, you know, career, work-wise, or, you know, focus on me as clear as that sounds. But I had nothing wrong with that. And I guess a little kind of uh, thing I, I want to mention, with dating apps and stuff like that, I know this, I'm not sure if it's like a trend or something, but I feel like some of those profiles I read, like, oh, I'm a little bit of geek, I'm a little bit of nerd, and stuff like that. Like, it's almost in, like, every other profile, like, it's cool to be geeky or nerdy and stuff like that again i, I think it is because i i play video games i do that on the channel and all that i played new pokemon games so definitely on the nerd geeky tree but it's funny that you see that so much is like back in the day like i didn't say back in the day but you feel like all the profiles i'm not sure if it goes with you know straight dating apps like tinder as well but i feel like hiking was the big thing maybe being in arizona as well but it feels like everybody oh i enjoy hiking uh and stuff like that like as a code word, like, I don't know, just like, hey, I like the outdoors, you know, I'm at your home, buddy. Or maybe just do seem more interesting, but I feel like geek and nerdy get tossed around, especially like I checked a profile on like shirtless and like gym rats. And I don't know, maybe the most geeky thing you see in the profile is that they have like a, a Mario shirt, or like a Mario shirt that's cut off to show the uh, biceps and muscles as well. And I don't know, it's kind of, I mean, it almost kind of feels like, What's a uh, quote about insanity? The definition of insanity is doing the thing, same thing over and over, expecting the same results. Because I, you know, open up the app, check uh, the grid, and and I guess maybe because uh, well, one thing I want to talk about in just a bit, but I feel like this hasn't been really much to grab me, and I don't want to like uh, say yes to the first person. Oh, if I if I just honestly don't feel that connection, I think just with my mindset, it gets. It takes a lot for me to, you know, feel that connection and simple like hi is doesn't really show me much. And, you know, I know a lot of people use the apps to hook up and have sex and stuff like that. And that's fine. You know, uh, I've been that way in the past as well. Uh, but I guess it's annoying because I like mentioned like, hey, I'd rather like date or whatever than you know, hook up and I get some of those messages like you host or uh, especially like uh, also it's so funny that I mentioned like, hey, you have to have a face profile pick and this will be my little soapbox and I still get message from faceless profiles. Either they crop out the face or worse, hide it with an emoji. I find that stupid and annoying or they just don't, don't put a profile pick in the first place and down the road, you know, I feel like it's to me, it says that they're hiding something, and it could just be, you know, maybe they're closeted, they don't want to be fine out. Even with this day and age, I don't see too much of need through that, but who knows. But also, you know, it could be somebody catfishing or somebody, you know, that had, like, diff like I don't trying to lure somebody. I'm not sure how many horror stories. I'm sure there's a lot. I wonder if there's any documentaries. I bet there are about, like, craziness when it comes to, like, apps and dating and hookups and the point, like, someone tries to... Uh, you know, kidnap somebody, rob somebody, or whatever, or do like more heinous, like sexual deviant stuff as well. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of like that side of caution, and then also, I read this from one profile as well, just saying like it gets annoying to like keep track of a conversation if you can't see the person's face. Like even if they can send a picture discreetly, you know, it just kind of gets annoying to me. Like I said, just to reiterate, it, it if they're hiding something, then I find it as a sign uh, that. Some people, you know, like that, you know, find guys that they consider on a down low or like straight, but they want to experiment or whatever, you know, I'm not really one to really judge too much, but it's like, eh, yeah. I didn't also, people can catfish, you know, with actual pictures, like, and all that. And I guess the, what I wanted to swing into as well, I think one of the biggest blocks for me when it comes to dating is that if I'm honest with myself, I feel like I have a lot of issue when it comes to self-esteem, at least when it comes to dating and romance and 
all that because I don't feel like that way. Like, give me listening to it because every podcast I do, I listen to it to edit and clean it up a little bit. So I listen to these podcasts uh, as well. And when I stream, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not like some little mouse and especially like at, at actual work as well. I, I feel like, you know, give my opinion, you know, very competent and stuff like that. It's wrong with ethics. I don't feel like, like mopey weak and with family as well. Like I feel like I can hold conversations without being like, Oh, no one cares what I have to say or whatever. But I think when it comes to dating, I can't get that way a lot. I remember seeing this comic from the oatmeal about self-esteem and compliments. And I can relate to that a lot. Like I almost feel like when it comes to comp, like if someone said, Hey, you're a good hard worker or great job and stuff like that. I, I, I definitely uh, acknowledge that. Like, yeah, cool. I'll roll with that. Um, no, it's like those kind of things like diffuse my brain. But when it comes to like more of a dating partner or whatever, I don't know. It, in the comic from the oatmeal, like had some points too, but it kind of either feels like uh, they don't really know me. So maybe they just call me handsome, but they don't really know me. And if they do, they'll get disappointed. Or I think another one, it kind of feels like someone's like lying to you or trying to manipulate you. Like, they, oh, you're hot, you're sexy. And then when they can get with you and get physical and then move on, like, oh, they just said that just so they could have that moment. But, and then maybe they didn't really. I guess that's the thing. It, uh, it doesn't feel sincere or whatever. Or it feels like that's what the focus is. And like, okay, like, I'd rather be talked to as a person or like more genuine conversations. Not to say there's nothing wrong when. People, you know, saying, hey, you're hot, I'm hot, whatever, let's hook up, let's meet up, blah, blah, blah. It's just not for me, and I don't know, I feel like I encounter a lot, and those moments is kind of, eh. I think I also get that mindset is that even if, you know, it seems more genuine, maybe the more would be a possible connection, I always kind of shoot myself down, like, kind of reject myself before getting rejected, like, think of several different reasons, like feeling... Uh, if somebody did go for like meet up or maybe even date or whatever, they eventually find something wrong with me or find something or find someone who's better. And I feel like that's the case too. Like I had those times as well when it feels like, uh, and there's nothing wrong with dating around. Like, uh, do have to like, I think communication helps as well when, you know, seeing somebody, um, unless like they're saying, Hey, we're going to, you know, having this conversation about being in an actual relationship, actual commitment, like don't assume that. Cause I think you'll just kind of hurt yourself if that's not the case. Uh, like, and it's fine. People can date around and find a more compatible partner, especially in the long term. It's not with you. Then, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles and, you know, no use crying over spilt milk. I don't know why I'm saying like this cliche metaphors or whatever, but I'm not sure if I, I, I said this before, but that's one thing I, I don't miss with like being, like dating more is like not feeling like overwhelmed. I'm sure I mentioned that, but like feeling overwhelmed, almost heartbroken when it comes to like it's not working out or there's someone better. Or, and I mean, that's not such a case. I feel like this is someone better for them, not just someone better because I feel like I kind of tear myself down a lot as well. And you know, I, I do have my confidence and stuff like that. Like, I post selfies and I think, well, I can lose some weight, whatever, but I, I don't think I'm the uh an ugly dunkly not quite the swan but and again looks are everything and i think sometimes like that becomes a little barrier to like everyone like hey are you just gonna think i'm like boring or are you gonna have a problem with me playing video games or liking video games or watching cartoons even though like more like mature animation like adult swim and stuff like that but sometimes i just worry like oh, if i'm interested in that is that going to be a problem or you think that's stupid or think that's silly. And then I also just kind of have that disconnect. Not to say that when it comes to romantic partners and stuff like that, or relationships, like you have to like everything. You have to have everything in common. Cause and I think that can help a lot, especially with the major interest in the bigger parts of your life. But you don't have to like, like every show, Like they may like Marvel movies and that may not be for you. Or they like horror scary movies and you can't handle them that much, but let's kind of give and take as well. And then one thing I want to talk about when it comes to dating, I'm not, I'm not sure like if this is in a heterosexual like straight world as well as a gay, but I feel like ageism is a big thing as well. And 
I think that definitely goes both way. Like there's definitely ageism, but it's also reverse ageism. Because to be honest, you know, I, I even when you know I was more like coming to bloom and stuff like that with my sexuality and all that. I always liked uh, older guys. Not that I'm like no Anna Nicole uh, Smith. You know, nothing really wrong with that if that's genuine. But definitely liked older guys and all that. And I really feel like I, you know, hear people talking about like ageism or even racism when it comes to dating. Like if you're over thirty, over forty, younger guys won't have anything to do with you. But then sometimes I feel like the older guys who complain about that or want to get with the younger guys in the first place and are just not interested. So it's like, I don't know, playing a card just because you're not getting what you want. Even though, you know, th there can be a lot of truth to that too. Like a, a lot of older guys, like no more, especially with the history of, you know, hey, when it comes to like being gay, there's you no, know, you had to be in the closet, depending where you lived, where you were, or what you did for work, or there's so many different reasons. I think definitely a lot of things have changed, but, you know, before same sex marriage, before there was a lot of gay bars and gay TV shows and representation and stuff like that. I think that definitely came a long way, and especially with older guys, you kind of like live through those decades to those changes, and kind of that's always kind of interesting to have this conversation and hear about that history and all that. But I also kind of feel like there's like reverse ages, and like I've seen stuff like profile like guys have, and that's been kind of a turnoff for me as well. Not to say there's anything bad with having preferences and stuff like that, but I feel like if I'm not fitting into those, like if they say it's an age range, like if I'm younger than that, I'm like, yeah. Or, and this is a race thing as well, and that's like a big can of worms as well, talking about, okay, like, hey, if some people are more attracted to these types or skin colors or races or turned off by them, like I feel like race is getting thrown out, out a lot, and maybe wrongfully, maybe so, but... It can get complicated. But I feel like sometimes like old guys like they want to date someone younger and I think would also kind of cause some hang ups and some blocks for me over the years. It's kinda of like and when I think about it, I don't can't think of anything like really explicit or um and I don't think that's a right word, but something like that really was spoken out loud directed towards me. But I kinda of felt like when it came to older guys looking down at younger guys like Hey, you guys, you know, looking for sex, we're looking for uh, actual relationships, commitment. You know, you may live in a studio apartment, but we have like a condo or an actual home, a house, and all that. And you may just have a job, but we have careers. So it kind of felt like that uneven kind of like, uh, maybe sense of power or that, that power dynamic and stuff like that. It is kind of weird, like with the gay community, like the dad son kind of relationships, and I don't, I don't think they really mean that, like actual dad son, but kind of like I'm the older one, and he's a younger guy. They kind of have that certain dynamic, and you know, works if, if it works for a lot of people, you know, that's cool. But sometimes for me, it just kind of feels like that kind of like, you know, not quite being equals. Like, hey, you're the more successful, you're the more like breadwinner, and stuff like that. And going back to my like, my actual, like, one relationships, he is 25 years older than me. And, you know, I think it was maybe two to three years. Um, I forget. And it wasn't because of the age. Um, surprisingly, I'm not sure if he, like, he kind of gave my interests as well. Like, when it comes to, like, watching TV, like, never really played video games and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah. Um, still a, one of my closest friends as well with my ex. Um but yeah, I think sometimes just my own issues with either like confidence or self-esteem. And I think more when it comes to thinking about being with somebody or dating or being rejected or accepted as, I don't know. I think sometimes it even trickles down to friendships as well. It's just been a good while since making connections. And then one thing I wanted to talk about, um, this might be helpful or whatever. I just kind of like talk about it as I get older, you know, you kind of like see through bullshit, see red flags and have kind of less tolerance for it. And I think that's a pretty good thing to have, but I don't mean that in a way to like get upset over everything. Like if small things, you don't, you don't want to build mountains out of them, like build mountains over ant hills. So there's like that fine balance of like knowing when to call it bullshit or knowing, you know, Hey, that's a red flag versus uh, even though I might be overreacting or if I'm upset, you have this conversation. So they kind of know where you, we're coming from and all that. This is kind of a, maybe an interesting story. I think this is like the closest I had to a another relationship and stuff like that. 
I don't think I have any like of my personal friends who really listen to podcasts, but they did and no very few would know who I'm talking about. But this is a long time ago, probably almost a decade ago, if I'm trying to remember correctly. Yeah, but this uh, guy kind of chatting with, like, he moved in from Texas. And that's the big thing, like, uh, people got to know who I'm talking about, Tex- the guy from Texas and all that. And trying to get settled in, I think he was kind of balancing a little bit or, like, kind of had a temporary place he can stay at, but needed to find something a little bit more solid. And I don't know, I, I think it was just me being young and stupid and stuff like that. I think, hey, we can give each other a try. And to even put things more awkward, um, this was uh, after I, of course, broken up with my uh, ex, but we still lived together and we still lived in a one bedroom, which worked out, you know, sharing a one bedroom, even though it's your ex, you know, we made it work and it was a very comfortable situation, but, you know, we actually uh, said, hey, you can live with us and, you know, so slowly build towards a relationship and stuff like that. I don't know why I kind of felt like taking the plunge and all that. But maybe before we got to that point, um, like Caddy and stuff like that, we like, made up with Bar, and I guess he made other friends as well, and you kind of feeling out. But I remember that night, he kind of more gravitated towards someone else, and maybe being a little jealous or just being a little upset, like, hey, you know, am I chopped liver, kind of stuff like that. And that was probably the biggest red flag. I don't want to say, like, the biggest, biggest, but that should definitely, like, put him off like, hey, no. Uh, because it kind of... Not since, like, forgive him. I, I don't think there was, like, really an apology or anything like that. But, like, we talked, like, okay, yeah. And then actually had him sign on to uh, be a resident at the apartment and stuff like that. And lived together. And, and and not to spoil it too much, it was very short-lived. Um, I even remember buying him a phone as well. Even bought, because he liked Kingdom Hearts. And I uh, got into games stuff. I got Kingdom Hearts. Because I played the games as well in high school and stuff like that. So, like, oh, I'll... He was playing them as well at the apartment. Um, he did eventually get a job, which I think lasted like a day or so. Um, that's kind of a little funny end to that story as well. I'll get back to that. But I remember, uh, I guess he was like chatting around, and actually a mutual friend was going to have him live with him. So he kind of like, oh, there's more kind of more space. And I got, you know what, this kind of helps so we can kind of slow things down and stuff like that. So even though we kind of had this idea of moving forward and stuff like that. You know, hey, if this helps, you get more settled in it. Especially since I was still living with my ex and at least an apartment. Like, you know, yeah, I get it. And it's like as soon as he kind of moved his things out. He didn't have much to move anyways. But as soon as he moved out with uh, to stay with my friend, I'm not sure if it was couch uh, surfing as well or if my friend actually had an extra spare room. I, I think that it just kind of felt like a step up. But I think as soon as that happened, like, boom, I'm like, you know, didn't bother contacting me and stuff like that. And then that, that, that awkward change, like, okay, that that pretty much done it. And I mean, like, they, like I said, I bought them a phone, but it's like before they had a lot of smartphones, like, because it's one of those like prepaid phones that you buy minutes for. So it was like a flip phone. So it wasn't too much, but it's like one of those things like, hey, if you spent a uh, loan a friend 20 bucks and you ever hear from that friend again, then that's more of an investment than losing $20 and stuff like that. So. Yeah, that happened, and I even hearing like he bounced around a little bit more, and I even heard from one friend that I guess um, the guy from Texas that I didn't really date but was supposed to, like on webcam or something. I'm not sure if you're like a camboy. To be honest, like he wasn't like uh, like a, uh, he. I would say he's my type, but uh, what not attractive like when you think of like cam boys or anything like that but i'm not sure of the exact context but i guess on camera he was smoking crack and stuff like that like oh and it, my friend like kicked him out like right away and stuff like that i, I think it'd be funny like he was asking him to buy more minutes for his phone as he was being kicked out and eventually he heard like through the grapevine that he got his ass back to texas I'm not sure what happened with that guy i do know his name i can say for the sake of the podcast but i do remember him but yep a guy from texas and i thought that was kind of like hurt feelings on my end i just think it felt you know a good lesson you know take the good from the bad and i think it just kind of helps you know have less tolerance for bullshit and kind of see through things like no and i like compromise like forgive easily again don't be like too uh overly upset so this is that that fine balance i I think in life as well not just like relationships and dating but just how to balance like 
you know, if you're upset, that's fine. But no, like, are you being more upset or whatever? Because you don't want to be people who, like, hang on, like, stalk the ex's uh, social media and be, like, upset every day. Like, hang on to, like, all the negative things day to day to really bring yourself down. But kind of a funny story. And the one thing I wanted to la- uh, end this podcast in is talking about a movie that it's funny. It's, I haven't actually seen the movie, but I just hate it uh, just because uh, how it ends and that's the movie 500 Days of Summer. And I think it got pretty good, re- uh, well received. But my most exposure to the movie is watching a Sin- Sins video um, recap of it. But the thing that I think it's a terrible movie, the thing that I just can't stand is like the ending is how the character, I believe it's Zoe Deschanel, because in the movie, like, uh, like seeing her um, through all this time and she just wants to keep things casual. Like she doesn't believe in like relationships and being a girlfriend and all that. And I feel at that point, like it was very like vocal about it. Like, Hey, we're not supposed to be in a relationship, but not meant to be and blah, blah, blah. And then you find out that she's getting married and all that. And that, that's like the thing I absolutely hate about the movie because I haven't been there. Like, if I'm honest, I probably date a little bit more than I let on. But I remember like one guy, like, him go on and on about like not being in relationships or never getting married and stuff like that and then down the road like because that's the thing like that happened to me as well is that someone who was like very vocal about you know not being in relationships not being in monogamous committed relationships or being married or having a marriage and all of a sudden they have a boyfriend and stuff like that because then that was of course after like we kind of like separated and kind of broke away so it's not like immediately around the corner but then like running down at the bar and like oh this is my boyfriend my partner and stuff like that and like not at the time but it's like uh like it is i don't know if someone's so vocal about that like i can get if people who aren't really like relationship focus or have that mindset and not really like for marriage for themselves you know that's fine and then Maybe they meet the right person, have that change of heart, and then they find so okay, this is something that works for me that I really want. I can get that, you know, if that general, uh, genuine change of heart, say, like, hey, I never thought I would be in a relationship, have that kind of commitment, have that kind of thing going in my life, and then boom, I find it, and then I find more happiness with it, you know, that's fine. But if you're like very vocal, like very anti relationship, very anti marriage, or for yourself, um, then the, I don't know, it's kind of like, um, you just kind of roll your eyes until they roll out of your head. And I think, again, I haven't seen the movie, but I feel like 500 Days of Summer is like that. Like, she's very vocal about that. And then all of a sudden, oh, I'm getting married. And like, oh my God, where's the bucket for me to puke in? Like, I just can't stand that. And even the other thing, like a little small complaint about the movie is that it's not actually 500 Days of Summer. Like, there's been days that he hasn't spent or spoken with her. So it's not 500 days of summer. It's like less than that. I'm, I'm not sure if someone went online and saying, Hey, it's actually this many specific days. And also the uh, cringy ending to the movie is like, um, us girl out kind of like, and like kind of like plays like how he met the summer girl. But then the next girl, her name's autumn. And like, again, where's that puke button, a p- puke bucket. I don't say button, but, yeah, and I don't get too much into, like, those romance movies. Um, I wonder if that one was more of a slice of life versus, like, a comedy or anything like that. But yeah, that's the one thing I can't stand is, like, this, that whole, like, no marriage, no relationships, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, I'm getting married, engaged, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. So, not sure if this was a really helpful or interesting podcast. You know, just a little me. So, forever alone in life as well as in podcast. Um, but, yeah, like I said... I think you just kind of find that good balance as you get older, you know, I, in the ideal world, I would have like a, a good solid uh, partner to add to and have that, especially like the support system as well to have that love and support of a more intimate level. But if it doesn't happen, then I, I can be fine with that as well. But I think again, there's a lot of hangups I have. A lot of times like I won't put myself out there just kind of like, I guess fear of rejection or just like, hey, if it does start something, it might just going to crash and burn at the end. I think kind of having those reservations or playing those things in the mind, like I can see in the future and it's going to end in heartbreak. So only if I was really psychic, like that's a raven or something like that.
I guess the, the whole moral of the of this week's podcast is love stinks, but sometimes it doesn't. And there's nothing wrong again with being single or enough. I don't know. I just kind of rambling on. I'm not sure if this is, is if any bit of wisdom as well, but yeah, I guess that will do it. I guess if anyone has any like love, dating, life advice, you know, this, use the comments in this video for that, and maybe this will be interesting. You know, what comments I get, but oh well. So that, again, to end this, like again, the best way to support me and the channel is to like, comment, and subscribe, whether it be on YouTube, Twitter, or uh, Twitch. And again, I, I uh, do keep those links in the description of each video and the bow of the channel, whether that be on YouTube or Twitch. So it's it's be quantity everywhere as well. But and I think also, you know, for those who do have uh, boyfriend, girlfriends, partners, all that, hope you have a really good Valentine's Day. And that's one thing, like, I know some people complain about the holiday as well, like being too commercial or like, being so focused on gift giving or treating someone nice one day of the year, it should always be consistent. But I, I, I always think it's a fun idea. Like I don't take it too seriously when it had a reason to celebrate it. And you don't have reasons to celebrate it. Then no worries. You know, don't let that bring you down. Actually, uh, I'll end it on this little story as well. Not really a story, but I've been always getting a tradition of like every Valentine's day, like I'll just buy myself a box of chocolates and even one of those Valentine's day cake. I mean, when you had one that had like a Hello Kitty, like little thing on a heart shaped cake. So, buy a little sweets for yourself, you know, because if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? Amen. Yeah, thanks for listening, and y'all take care. Uh, goodbye.